Hey everyone, it's your soul, and yeah, just seeing some really amazing imagery and stories coming from the Amazon, South America, Brazil. Apparently, from imagery, stories, satellite imagery, and so on, a very large amount of the forest of South America is currently on fire. And actually, I'm, I've been told also uh, in the northern areas of Russia as well. So, aside from the obvious catastrophe for people on the ground and the implications for the rest of the world in terms of pollution and lack of oxygen and all the issues that deforestation brings, there's some really twisted and messed up politics going on behind the scenes of this that we all really need to look at. And I'll go through and explain what I understand to be going on here, and at least on the surface, and then I'm going to bring up some suggestions for what we can do in response to this, obviously, it's definitely not a straightforward situation. You can't just magically reappear an entire rainforest after you've destroyed it. Uh, but we've got to do the best we can. So, first of all, as you can see on here, they just grabbed a few memes off of off of uh, social media. When Notre Dame was burning, the world's media covered every moment of it, and billionaires rushed to restore it. Right now, the Amazon is burning the lungs of our planet. It's been burning for three weeks now. No media coverage, no billionaires. Now I don't watch TV, but I'm going to take their word for that. The Amazon rainforest, one of the largest and most important ecosystems on Earth, has been burning for three weeks. The media has virtually ignored it. And this is a satellite shot that's turned up. And you can see this is, I mean, it's a huge area, basically, isn't it? Um, yeah, really shocking. And... Obviously, people on the ground are going to do what they can to put the fire out. There's not really much I can do about that. Probably the same for most people around the world, but other than maybe sending the money to help them. This is a video from uh, apparently a couple of months ago where there was also fires burning. So I read a translation here in the comments. I presume it's right. It says... This is what they did to our village, the land we've been fighting for during two years, they came and set fire to it. It's not bad enough that they killed our rivers, hunt our animals and demolish most of our land. They also had to set fire to it. So what she's basically talking about, as I understand it, is the result of the Brazilian government's policies, which have effectively said they're going to turn the rainforest into... Uh, a source of money ultimately they're just going to sell off land rights i mean you would think that they would presumably at least cut the trees down and sell them for wood but we're going to get into what might actually be going on here is it's a classical it's almost a, a, a false flag environmental attack it would be easy to interpret it that way at the very least and the evidence coming out from the from the brazilian government doesn't really do them any favors to try and uh, quell that concern let's say so you can see this was published in the National Geographic in October of last year. And at that time, I wasn't aware of any of this stuff. I, you know, I've got so many things to look into myself. Um, Brazilian politics wasn't high on the list, but obviously now it's being focused into our awareness. And, you know, if, if anything good can come out of these fires, at least maybe us all drawing our focus into this subject might be it. So... I'm probably going to butcher his name, but uh, Jair Bolsonaro, um, the president now, effectively uh, had campaign uh, pledges to roll back protections of the rainforest and indigenous rights. So not only was he effectively saying, put me in the government and I will uh, no longer protect the rainforest and I'll remove rights of indigenous people, but he's effectively acted on that. and. The net result of that allegedly is, oh, well, Brazil's going to make loads of money. You know, maybe it's probably just him and his cronies who are going to end up making most of that money. But it's understandable in a country where there's so many very, very poor people who now with the Internet can see the rest of the world, can see how, you know, stars on social media, even just people in their bedroom are making millions of dollars. I, I can understand how a campaign promise to make these people wealthier even at the expense of the jungles, might get him elected, even though I personally think most elections are completely rigged. But let's set that aside. Perhaps a lot of people who now live in cities have lost their connection to the jungle. I've never been to Brazil, but I know that that kind of thing does happen in general. 
uh, as soon as people move away from the nature and the countryside, they kind of just don't understand it after a few generations and don't respect or value it. So we have a quote here from one of the leaders of an indigenous group. We are very worried based on what the president-elect has stated. A native leader stated, uh, Beto Marubo, from the Javari Valley indigenous land in Brazil's far western borderlands. If what he has promised comes to pass, there will be chaos and upheaval in the Amazon. This was months ago. This was nearly a year ago this was written. Reports are circulating that Bolsonaro's victory has been bolstered, has, has already bolstered a sense of impunity among criminal groups that traffic in timber, exotic species and other riches pilfered from indigenous land. Many brothers tell us there are invasions, people entering the territories with no regard for the rules and no fear of the authorities. So, I mean, I've seen videos from a long time ago where there were people being killed uh, in fights over logging. Basically, they were just going in and cutting down massive ancient rainforest trees and there were literally gunfights over it and people died on both sides. And that was before this guy was elected, while there was actual, actually some attempt at protecting the land. And there were journalists and investigators also who were murdered and I've seen documentaries into their murders. So this is a long-standing battle, basically, between people who at that time were criminal gangs trying to exploit the environment and the people that lived there and people that wanted to protect the environment. Just the same as happens in most other countries to some extent. In Britain, we've had fracking uh, and big, uh, you know, a similar kind of situation with corporations often acting criminally, corrupt governments making decisions that are very bad for the people and for the land and that benefit only a very small group of people financially. I'd be very surprised if the Brazilian people really saw any financial benefit from this policy. In reality, most of the money is going to be siphoned off, I would imagine, to possibly even overseas corporations. So if we skip forward. So this, this story was also published around the same sort of time from The Guardian, calling him a global danger. Accelerate climate change instead of reverse it, you know, would be the outcome of his activity. And we've heard recently of how apparently the amount of deforestation taking place in, in that area, even without the fire, as I understand it, was has gone up exponentially. Here's the thing. The counter argument to, to the environmental argument is that people are stating, well, the rest of the world, white people, Europeans have destroyed their land, burnt and used up all their forests. Why shouldn't we be allowed to use our forests? They've got all the money. We haven't. And from a capitalist, short-sighted perspective, which is the prevalent one in America and Europe primarily, uh, at least certainly amongst politicians and corporations, there's a certain logic to that. Ultimately, if, if all you value is money, then yeah, why wouldn't you use your resources? Does it really make any difference if you live 50, 60 or 80 years? You're going to die anyway, so what the hell, we might as well just burn up everything. What's the point? That's pretty much the attitude of of a considerable amount of capitalist philosophy, let's say, if you can even call it that. And it's really sad to hear that that's also spread to South America. The tribes, apparently, who have lived in balance and harmony with the forest for a very long time, gradually losing their voice and being ridiculed by people who really have no connection to the earth and have forgotten where they come from. I'm sure that's not everybody in Brazil by any means, but that's certainly a very common perspective that's held by many many people around the world who somehow seem to think that money made from paper doesn't grow on trees in fact ironically a lot of the money printed now is actually printed on a kind of oil based material so apparently money doesn't grow on trees anymore money is uh, actually just produced from death aka oil so they're talking here about deforestation largely being driven by demand for land to grow soybeans exported to feed livestock and to expand cattle farms so despite people often claiming that this deforestation is actually to somehow magically feed vegans, even though vegans make up a very small percentage of the world's population, the reality is that most of the plants grown full stop on this planet are grown to feed animals to be eaten as meat. And animals require massively more resources to raise for food, pound for pound, than plant foods do that we could be eating. So one good option you have to improve the balance here is to actually go vegan and just adopt a, a plant-based diet ultimately, which is the best for health, confirmed by numerous studies and many, many people from lived experience. That's a side topic, but definitely a very important issue here. 
So how else exactly can these people make money and exploit the Amazon? Obviously, they can cut down the trees, sell the wood. There's mining possibilities there on a very large scale. And obviously, there's the potential for, as it's stated here, essentially making massive industrial farms. So this story is from January this year, 2019, um, and it states here on uh, Guardian again. <clears throat> Hours after taking office, Brazil's new president, Jair Bolsonaro, has launched an assault on environmental and Amazon protections with an executive order transferring the regulation and creation of new indigenous reserves to the Agriculture Ministry, which is controlled by the powerful agribusiness lobby. So he effectively took what should have been a government's role of stewardship and protection of one of the planet's most sacred spaces, let's say, and turned it over to corporations. There will be an increase in deforestation and violence against indigenous people, said Dinaman Tuxa, uh, the ex executive coordinator of the Articulation of Indigenous People of Brazil, APIB. Indigenous people are defenders and protectors of the environment. So he also took steps to change the policies so that the government would have control over non-governmental organisations which kind of makes them no longer NGOs, right? I mean, a non-governmental organisation, by definition, doesn't have control coming into it from the government. So if the government controls them, then are they really NGOs anymore? A temporary degree, which expires unless it's ratified by Congress within 120 days, mandates that the office of the government secretary, Carlos Alberto dos Santos Cruz, supervise, coordinate, monitor and accompany the activities and actions of international organisations and non-governmental organisations in the national territory. Bolsonaro, who has often criticised Brazilian and international NGOs who he accuses of sticking their noses into Brazil, defended the measure in a tweet. More than 50% of national territory is demarcated as indigenous land. Less than a million people live in these places, isolated from true Brazil, exploited and manipulated by NGOs. Together we will integrate these citizens. So he's drawn an imaginary division between the people who are living in the jungles and, quote, true Brazil even though these people and their lives were there long before anything that he's talking about. It's really quite disgusting if you think about it. Um, and we'll come on to that in the next post even more. He's talking about here having spending cuts on healthcare for indigenous people. We have figures for the general public that are much below what is spent on healthcare for the indigenous. I find that slightly questionable given the extent to which indigenous people have an extensive knowledge of how to use plants for healing and so on. But Anyway, during last year's election campaign, Bolsonaro promised to end demarcation of new indigenous lands, reduce the power of environmental agencies, and free up mining and commercial farming on indigenous reserves. His measure also gave the Agricultural Ministry power over new Quilombos, rural settlements inhabited by descendants of former slaves. So we get the idea. Basically, he's very right wing, very capitalist minded, very anti ancestral wisdom let's say and basically he views uh, these folks as subhumans is what it comes down to um, and you know I mean if you look at some of these people in the pictures I think there's some down here you know it's easy to make a case for why you might class them as too weird or uh, like caveman like or something like that and you know not not to be trusted or respected but ultimately at the end of the day no matter what you might think about their beliefs or how they live, the fact is they've survived there for a very long time without destroying the rainforest. And yet, somehow they're the, they're the uncivilised people. Hmm, questionable. So here's a piece that's more recent, and this is from July this year. He wants to destroy us, Amazon tribes say. Indigenous leaders gathered in Altaya de Norte to discuss how best to defend their lands against the anticipated onslaught. Bolsonaro's no good, he said. He wants to destroy the lot of us, bomb our villages. That's the news I heard. So in July, the indigenous people were saying that they're hearing that there's plans for literally some kind of war against them. Now, the Amazon's on fire, which would equate to being a war against them. Uh, hmm. I wonder how they managed to predict that. Now, here's the thing. This is where we get into the actual conspiracy, let's say, of this or the, the realistic possibility of what's actually going on. The president is claiming, effectively, that it's the NGOs now who have set these fires off in order to make him look bad. 
and to cause problems for Brazil because he took their money away. Now, on the surface of this, that's the most ridiculous thing I've heard in a long time. Ultimately, the NGOs are there, for, uh, allegedly from their own perspective, to help the indigenous people maintain their rights and to protect the environment. So he's making out as if these groups are not really there for that. He hasn't, I don't, I've never seen him say exactly what he thinks they're there for. I mean, maybe he thinks they're there to take government money i don't know but um at the end of the day there's a lot easier ways of making money right than traveling to the jungle to try and get a government to give you money and in this case the government is in opposition to you anyway it doesn't make much sense and even if that was true why would you burn the forests down how would that help your claim to get money is that you need to protect the land against corporations and people of that nature coming and mining it and building farms and so on if you burn the trees down you've made it easier and easier to justify having farms and mining go on in that place so his claim literally makes no sense and we here's him literally saying this So he doesn't actually explain anything in terms of the details of why people would do that, even though it makes no sense at all. It takes a pretty major willingness to completely disconnect from reality and lie to everyone to be able to stand there and say something like that that makes absolutely no sense at all, unless you're making a clearly calculated attempt to commit environmental fraud and, and crime and just to try and, you know, hand wave away the details of it, hoping in the process that enough people support you that you don't get murdered, pretty much. I mean, <laughs> that's what I see when I look at him. During a meeting with foreign journalists last week, Bolsonaro defended his desire to develop indigenous reserves, warned the international community against meddling in the Amazon, and painted himself as a champion of indigenous people who no longer wanted to live like prehistoric men with no access to technology, science, information, and the wonders of modernity. But as they gathered at the headquarters of their indigenous association, Jivari activists and elders said that they were determined to resist what they called a Bolsonaro-backed assault on their ancestral homes. He sees us as animals, as if we didn't know how to think, said Iwatan Marubo, who hoped foreign funding might help tribes adopt surveillance techniques to safeguard their land. We are much more intelligent than he is. Lucia Canamara, one of the Jivari's few female leaders, said, If the government doesn't support us, we must find a way of protecting ourselves. He has come to leave us in the darkness, but we won't allow it. So, I mean, this is a bit like the plot line to the movie Avatar, even, where you've just got these, it's just political manoeuvring lies and really like a false flag attack, I would say, where the politicians try to paint a picture which is completely the opposite of all of the evidence that we see. What can we actually do if we're outside of Brazil or even in Brazil about this? Now, when I've brought this subject up in some groups that I'm a part of online, surprisingly, the first comments I got were, oh, well, you don't need to worry too much about the oxygen because most of the oxygen, well, we get a lot of oxygen from the oceans. And that was a surprise to me. I really wasn't expecting that. I've never heard that said before. And I went away and looked it up. And apparently quite a lot of oxygen does come from plankton in the oceans. I don't know that. I've never heard that before, but I'm not going to just deny it and say that's not possible. Maybe it's true. Even though that may be the case, we still need oxygen from the trees, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I've ever seen anybody prove that we don't need oxygen from trees. So I don't accept that somehow because there's plankton in the ocean, it's fine to burn down the Amazon. That's just, to me, that's madness, first of all. Secondly, even if that were true, that doesn't make it right to do that when there's tribes that live there. And, you know, it's fairly obvious to me that one way or another, these fires benefit the politicians and the, and the corporations involved they don't benefit the tribes, people, or the NGOs. That's just ridiculous. Now, what's, you know, people would say, historically, follow the money. Who benefits from this? 
Well, it's not the tribes people, is it? And it's probably not the NGOs. Uh, I don't think the NGOs are suddenly going to be hugely funded by the Brazilian government as a result of this. They might get funding from outside the country. However, what's the motivation for using this land and for them wanting to take the land? Well, as already stated, partially it's mining, partially it's wood, partially it's agriculture. So where's all of that money going to come from to buy the things that they produce? Well, it's going to come from other countries. So my suggestion, which has been my suggestion for a very long time, is that we become self-sufficient. There's no justification for us relying on other countries to provide us things unless there literally is no way for us to get them here or in our, in our local area or something equivalent to them. When politicians try to frame everything as if, oh, we must have jobs and we must export to other countries and have trade and all this kind of stuff. Well, trade is interesting and great, but if you aren't taking care of being sustainable at home first, then you're really not in balance at all. And frankly, you're opening yourself up to a world of pain. Now, where I live in Britain, most of the forests were gone a long time ago, long before I was born. There's hardly any left now. So my suggestion, my very strong suggestion, is that we learn to produce food forests and use, use the techniques taught to us by permaculture experts. If you've never heard of permaculture, please do go and research it. It's effectively a way of learning how to work with the land and growing plants so that we can be self-sufficient using minimal resources from an industry. It's very clever techniques, great knowledge available for how we can do that. And one of the ideas is, is called food forests, which ultimately, you can go and watch many videos on this online, ultimately they are a way of literally creating a forest full of food. And once they're grown, and they might, they might take a few years to get going, but once they're grown, they just pretty much constantly provide food sources. And you don't really have to do very much to maintain them. And there's no loser in that, except for big corporations who attempt to industrialise food. Everybody, if, if we had shared food forests, we would have hugely less bills to pay in terms of social care. Many, many different areas of life would be much more simple. If somebody runs out of food, they don't need to go and apply to the government to go and get some money to while well, they go and find a job and then go and get a job working for a company that probably doesn't have anyone's best interests at heart anyway. And blah, 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 blah. They don't have to do any of that. They can just walk out into a food forest and there's food. And because these methods of producing food are very efficient, comparatively and could cover large quantities of the land i really do think that it would not be difficult to produce enough food for the population using that and other methods cooperative groups of people voluntarily working together to produce food as well is also an excellent idea we basically have the sacred benefit of using the land of this planet and most people seem to be thinking that that's nothing to do with them and they just need to go and work in an office moving paper around or tapping on a keyboard all day, and somehow there won't be any problems. The reality is that everything on this planet that we require is in some way connected to forests and the soil. And as soon as the forests and soil are gone, we won't be here anymore. It's that simple, at least not as humans. Here we come to the real core of the issue. There's a lot of people who feel so terrible inside themselves, they don't enjoy life, they hate themselves they hate life and they do this unconsciously they don't even know they're doing it they wouldn't admit to it they don't really understand that they're even doing it this basically means that they don't take any action to survive they don't take any action to protect life to do what needs to be done to create balance they're not interested in that part of them would be quite happy to see the world destroyed and that really is the core of this problem so the way that we actually move from a state of carelessness denial and heartlessness to a state of balanced consciousness and respect for life is through emotional healing. That's what I focused on for over 15 years. And I know that you can move from depression to happiness quite quickly through doing that. And as soon as you do that, you start to take a lot more interest in what's going to help you feel good. What foods are going to help you feel good? What foods don't help you feel good? And you very quickly learn that the industrialized kinds of foods that you find in supermarkets don't help you feel good generally. And the natural food sources of which there aren't many left now do help you feel good. And it's really not much of a leap to go from that position to one of respect for the earth and to try to take care of it and make good decisions. So this is a huge subject, but I would like to see governments from around the world taking steps immediately to perhaps put sanctions on Brazil. I mean, I'm not a big fan of government or anything related to that, but we have governments and they can do that. And that might be one of the few things that could make a difference here. 
We also need to be making rapid changes to become self-sufficient. We can't rely on these countries to protect the land they have, even though lots of people there might want that to happen. The reality is that it only takes one corrupt government to get in and suddenly it all goes to shit, basically, doesn't it? So, you know, they, they themselves, some of them are saying, well, it's not fair for us to have to protect our forests, even though that would be a really dumb idea, right? But, um, you know, we should be able to exploit the forests and it's not down to other countries to tell us to protect them. Well, you know, I think that's a dumb position, but the flip side to that is we should protect our own forests, and that is true, and we haven't been doing that. So solve the problems that you see in the world at home first. I personally would really like to see rapid, rapid transition away from a kind of money-oriented, politically driven madness towards something that's actually practical and that actually solves world problems. I've said many times that if politics was intended to solve problems, then we wouldn't have any problems because we've <laughs> we've had politics for so long and yet somehow politics really only ever seems to add to the problems. Sowing division, creating conquer and divide tactics, which is really what most of the politicians are doing, trying to build their own personal power by taking away the power of everyone else. And that's not balanced and it doesn't solve any problems. And life is only going to get worse until we address this. So, you know, let's use this massive red flag, this massive warning sign from the earth and from our atmosphere and our news sources to actually take action. And I don't think it's enough to just go storming through cities, protesting, shutting down stock markets and that kind of thing. I mean, it's good to grab people's attention, but if you don't actually have plans for action to practically improve life, then you're not going to achieve anything at all. We actually literally need more trees. We need more people growing food at home, less people driving to the supermarket and that kind of thing. Now, I, I've gone through a personal journey of learning how to grow food, and I would love to be completely self-sufficient at doing that. I know that it basically is impractical for me to do that and do all the other things I'm doing. So what I'd really like to do is to be able to come join up with other people in a community and actually work together to achieve shared goals. Unfortunately, I don't know of any in Britain. I know one or two here or there that are quite well known who maybe are aligned with what I think, but they tend to often be quite controlling. They have a lot of rules which I don't agree with. So my only solution at this point is to put out information that people can use to find their own solutions and work together and build their own communities in their own way, in a way that is balanced with the earth. And that's what I'm gradually moving towards doing. I also do want to go, I was planning actually to go to South America and start uh, start a community down there. But, I, you know, it seems like that might not be the best idea right now. But Ultimately, we need to come together in the ways that feel good to us to solve our problems collectively. And I see the Internet as being a great tool in helping us do that and find the right people. But the next step is we need to actually physically come together. I know a lot of people are very frightened of doing that. They think that the governments are going to break them up and control them. And they do have a, a history of doing that kind of thing. But I think ultimately, as long as you are aligned in a powerful way from the heart and actually intending the right things for the earth, you know, even if you do have problems from uh, the rest of society, at least you did the right thing. And the power of positive progressive action is ultimately a lot stronger than the power of destructive energy that doesn't come from the right place. So let's just build that life sustaining intention and focus on that and show the world the benefits of that rather than constantly fighting each other and pointing the finger. So if you've got anything to add to that and any comments, please do let me know down below. And if you like this, then definitely please do like, subscribe, reblog, resteam, share along on social platforms. It definitely helps my messages get heard by more people. It's going to help, I, in my opinion, it's going to help us find solutions to this more quickly. So, yeah, let's do our best. Until next time, peace.